Bye. Hello, I'm Dr. David Richardson. I'm a cataract and glaucoma surgeon in Southern California. On my morning commutes, I like to discuss those topics that there's generally not enough time to discuss in the exam room. Today, I'd like to talk about a class of glaucoma medications, the prostaglandin analog class, with particular focus on the cosmetic side effects of this class of medications. So let's get going. Now, the prostaglandin analog class of medications is probably the most commonly prescribed class of medications for glaucoma. And the reason for that is primarily because they work so well. Uh, they are the most effective at lowering intraocular pressure compared to all of the other available classes of medications. They're also very easy to take in that uh, the dosing is just once daily, although it's usually dosed at night or uh, bedtime. And they tend to be covered by insurance as the generic version of Zalatan, which is called Latanoprost, is almost universally covered. Uh, other brand names include Lumigan, Travitan Z, as well as Zyoptan. Now, one of the benefits of this class of medication is also that side effects uh, in terms of systemic side effects are quite rare. Pretty much all of the side effects are cosmetic, uh, which makes them uh, preferable, especially in those who have other systemic conditions such as uh, low blood pressure or uh, diabetes, which can be impacted by other glaucoma medications such as uh, the beta blockers. As a class, it works well, low side effect profile, but again, the cosmetic side effects are worth noting and these side effects can range from desirable uh, cosmetic side effects uh, to undesirable side effects that can actually impact the ability to assess the progression of glaucoma. So let's talk about the side effects. The most common side effect is just the, the surface of the eye, called the conjunctiva, which is normally a clear surface over the white surface, uh, can become injected or what we call hyperemic. That's where the blood vessels actually dilate and it results in the appearance of red eyes. Now, this tends to get better uh, with time, uh, although it never completely goes away. But it's also one of the reasons why the recommendation is to take the drop at night so that most of the redness will be gone by the morning. Another common side effect is lash growth. Now, the lash growth may actually be desirable. This uh, class of medications can result in long, lustrous lashes. Indeed, bimatoprost, which is the generic name for Lumigan, one of the glaucoma medications in this class, is separately marketed as Latisse, which is commonly sold in uh, dermatology offices. Uh, for hundreds of dollars uh, for a month's supply. So women will pay thousands of dollars a year to essentially use a glaucoma medication in order to lengthen uh, the lashes. This is not always a desirable side effect. So for example, many men do not like this because it feminizes the appearance of their face. But practically, there's also the issue of uh, them growing long enough that for those who wear spectacles or glasses, the lashes can actually rub on the back side of the lenses, uh, resulting in the need to almost continuously clean the spectacles just to maintain clear vision. And then there's the issue that if they grow long enough, they can actually impact one's visual field. So they can affect the superior vision in the field and that could affect visual field testing, which can affect the ability to tell whether or not glaucoma is progressing. Now, uh, fortunately or not, depending on one's perspective, uh, the lash growth is reversible. And so that's one of the reasons why those who do take Latisse end up needing to get monthly supplies on it in order to keep their lashes growing uh, long and luxurious. One of the things that the prostaglandin analog class does is to increase the amount of pigmentation that the melanocytes or the pigment uh, producing cells in the skin and this can result in darkening of both the iris and the skin 
uh, wherever the, the drop actually makes contact with the skin. Now in terms of the iris, it tends to just cause the areas that are already brown or dark little spots to to enlarge in size, uh, become more prominent. So patients who have blue or green eyes risk eventually having hazel eyes. Hazel eyes become a bit more brown. Those with brown eyes, there's really no change that's, that's noted. This is not reversible, unlike the, the lash growth. Um, the other pigmentation that can occur is in the lower lids. So if the eye drop runs over the um, margin of the lower eyelid onto the surface of the eyelid or the cheek, you can end up with more noticeable hair growth, which we all have hair there, but it tends to be so fine and soft that we don't notice it, but that does become more noticeable. Now you can reduce the risk of that, that pigmentation as well as the hair growth um, on the skin by either taking a tissue, rolling it up and just gently blotting the surface after you put the eye drop in the eye, or you can use drop applicators such as the Simply Touch applicator, inexpensive applicators that uh, reduce the amount of, of the drop that you actually put onto the surface of the eye. You still get enough to get an effect, but not so much that it rolls out over the cheek. There's one other thing that I would like to talk about, which is uh, called prostaglandin-associated periorbitopathy. Now, what this is is essentially a reduction in the volume of the connective tissue around the eyes. Now, for those who are uh, older, who have prolapsed fat pads, so you're getting kind of the bags under the eyes, uh, this can actually be cosmetically of benefit because it kind of tightens up that area around the eyes, uh, resulting in almost a laser surfacing or, or a mini bluff, as we'd say. Um, again, can be uh, desirable, but over time, this we'll call it PAP, prostaglandin-associated periorbitopathy, PAP for short, uh, can result in actually kind of a sunken appearance around the eyes, especially uh, above the eyes. And the initial term to describe this was deepening of the upper eyelid sulcus, this area here, and, and it really can give you kind of a, a skull appearance if it's, uh, if it's too severe. Fortunately, most people do not get it that severely. And fortunately, it does seem to be at least partially reversible in most people, but but not everyone. So anyway, I, um, I wanted to go over the main cosmetic effects of this class of medication because it is a very commonly prescribed class of medications. I also want to emphasize, though I think it's important to be aware of these, these side effects, it's also important to put things into perspective. You, if you're taking prostaglandin analogs or have been prescribed them, uh, the reason is because without glaucoma treatment, you will lose vision. Uh, eventually, you will go blind if glaucoma is not treated. It, it's, if you live long enough, that's just going to happen. So cosmetic effects, although certainly worth knowing about and important, uh, have to be balanced with the, the alternative cost, which is, which is blindness. And uh, given the choice between the two, uh, I think most people would reasonably choose the cosmetic side effects. Not everybody will be able to tolerate the side effects of this class of medications, so fortunately there are other classes which hopefully I'll have a chance to discuss in future videos. Fortunately for most patients with glaucoma, it's possible to customize a treatment that will meet both the medical needs uh, of their glaucoma as well as uh, lifestyle, uh, cosmetic, and uh, systemic uh, conditions.